of different grounding techniques. Um, so there's there's lots of different grounding techniques. Um, but if we were to narrow it down to three different types, three different categories, there's the mental, the physical, and then the more soothing grounding techniques. So when we're looking at what mental um, grounding techniques look like, that goes to focusing on your mind. So one way to think about this is you're giving yourself a mental task to do. Um, and then, oh, mental task being not, nothing too complicated, of course, because you don't want to flood your brain with complicated co complications or anything like that, but just nice, easy, simple mental tasks that you can complete and feel calm about. And then looking at the physical, this focuses more on your senses and especially um, your body and just how it's situated in your environment. And then looking at those soothing techniques, um, while we do want to address the physical and the mental, of course, we also want to remember to talking to yourself in a kind way during those intense and distressful moments is also helpful to the individual. Okay, so we're going to start going through a list of grounding techniques. Um, as we do this, we really encourage you guys to um, start making a list of the ones that you learn about today. Um, at least three. I mean, of course, you can write more if you'd wish, but try to start coming up with a list of at least three grounding strategies you learned from today that you are um, committed to learning and implementing into your life so you can remember and continue to practice them later on. And then after doing them, because we'll give you guys a little bit of time to explore these grounding techniques on your own to try to um, understand them and kind of feel them out a little bit. Um, so after doing that, try to reflect on your experiences as you do them. What did you like? What didn't you like? Just to try to figure out what types of techniques resonate with you the most. Okay, so first we're going to talk about mental grounding techniques. So the first one, I'm gonna go through each one just to give you guys an idea of what we mean by all of these. So the first one, describe your environment in detail. So this involves using all of your senses to explain what you are currently experiencing in your environment. So an example of this could be that if you're sitting down in a room, you'd be like, the walls are white. There are two gray chairs in this room. There's a rug on the floor and a bookshelf in the left corner of the room. So go, breaking down those details and giving yourself that mental task can help just separate yourself from the distress to give you a moment to just relax and <laughs> calm down a little bit. Then the next one, playing a categories game. Now this one means what it says. Um, if you wanna just try to think of different types of dogs, um, maybe you like um, music, so you could think about different um, pop musicians, or um, if you like, um, sports, you can think of different athletes that you like to watch. Um, so playing a categories game to list off different things that you really like can also give you time to just um, turn your focus into just focusing on that task in that moment and not the distressing situation. And then looking at describing everyday activities in detail, just like what it says, um, if you describe like a chore that you do, like if you go through doing um, like cooking dinner or something, it's like first I take this ingredient out and then I mix these ingredients in the bowl. Then I cut this up and then add it into the bowl, put it in the oven, you know, just walking through those steps, of course, giving it in more detail than what I showed, but um, just breaking it down to just really walk yourself through those tasks. And then the next one, imagining something pleasant or comforting. This is also a good mental task that someone can do um, to ground themselves. Um, of course, we all like to think about stuff that we like and is comforting to us. So what we encourage you to do as you try practicing this one is to engage in your engage your senses into what you're imagining. Like, what does it smell like? What does it taste like? What does it feel like? Um, whatever you're thinking about um, to really just engage your mind. And then going through reading something silently or out loud. Some people, of course, like to read books or um, say things out loud to themselves. Um, that could definitely help and engage your mind to give you some space from the distress. Um, if another way you can modify this activity is, let's say you don't want to necessarily read words in the moment um, and you don't want to pay too close attention to what you're reading, you could read the words backwards or you could um, just look at each individual letter of the word, um, if that would be more helpful to you. 
And then the last one we're going to go over today for mental grounding is counting or saying the alphabet. Um, so easy enough, just a nice, simple mental task that you can complete in any situation that you find yourself in. Um, and the key to this one is to do it slowly, just to really engage your mind into that moment. So this is just a short list of things for mental grounding techniques. We're going to give you guys just a little bit of time to um, explore these on your own after going through each one. Um, if you guys want to try them out on your own, um, if you guys want to um, research them a little bit or just kind of explore, make a list, whatever you need to do, we'll give you guys a couple minutes to kind of explore these and then we'll um, bring, bring it all back to talk about it. If you guys have questions, we'll be happy to answer them. All right, we'll slowly start to come back to the presentation. Um, if you're still finishing up doing something, of course, by all means, finish it up. Um, so we're just gonna just open the floor again to you guys, um, just to space to, if you guys have any questions, comments, if you wanna um, talk about which mental grounding activity that you like, or are you looking forward to trying, um, we'd be really happy to hear your thoughts and reactions. <clears throat> Okay, I, everything was okay with this one? Okay, well, if you guys, like like we said before, if you have any, oh, we might have a couple. Okay. Yeah, so we have one sharing, um, I'll need more practice in a quiet environment. Really hard to describe my environment without thinking of the work I need to do. Um, and then another shared, I tried the describe your environment in detail. That really made me think. Yeah. Great comments. Yeah, that one can be really helpful to some people. Of course, these grounding techniques can take some practice. So, of course, um, the environment can be a determining factor, um, especially if you haven't done this before. So just continuing to practice and try these out more um, will be will pay off in the end. So I'm um, thank you for trying those. <clears throat> so next we'll be Okay. Next, we're going to talk about more physical grounding. So more focusing on your body than thinking about um, having that mental um, involvement. 
So again, there's just a couple here. Um, the first one is focusing on your breathing. This can be really helpful to calm your body and kind of bring you back into yourself and focus on, you know, basic things that we don't really pay attention to um, regularly. Um, so to focus on breathing, you can just, you notice each inhale and each exhale. And this is also one where you can repeat a pleasant word to yourself on each exhale, kind of saying like, like I've got this kind of breathing out positivity um, to kind of keep yourself in the moment and not overwhelmed. Uh, the next one here is to clench and release your fists. This is kind of similar to a progressive muscle relaxation, but it's not as in depth. Um, it just kind of helps you focus on where tension might be. And so you clench your fists and you feel that tension. You can hold it for as long as you want. Um, and then releasing them, you kind of tell your body to release um, that tension. Um, so that kind of grounds you if you're feeling very, very tense. Um, another one is to just stretch, especially if you're spending, you know, long hours sitting and working or, you know, you just had a busy day and a lot has been going on, taking some time to just stretch, stand up, move around, um, stretch your back. I feel like that's a really big one because a lot of um, stress can um, build up in your back and your neck, especially um, when you're sitting a lot. Um, the next one is to notice your body in your environment. So thinking about how you might be sitting um, in your chair or Maybe if you're standing or walking, kind of notice your posture and notice how you move within your environment. Um, especially if you're feeling, you know, warm, cold. Um, if you feel a little uneasy, you just want to notice what your body is feeling in your environment. Um, another one is to carry a grounding object with you. Um, it doesn't have to be something huge, but having something maybe in your pocket, like some people carry just like a coin or a marble or something small that if you, you um, it's within your reach and if you grab it and you feel it, that centers you and grounds you in the moment. Um, it might have some significance to it. It might not. It might just have you thinking like, oh, I have this coin. Let me focus on, I mean, it could bring you to other grounding exercises um, when you touch that object as well. Uh, the next one, we have here is to identify or touch objects in your environment, similar to kind of describing your environment in detail, um, but just feeling something, identifying it, noticing it, and maybe describing the texture to yourself, the um, temperature, like if it's cold, warm, just um, whatever you wanna do to um, help, I guess, ground yourself with the objects in your environment. Um, so again, we are going to give you some time to do whatever you want with this list, um, write something down, research, um, try them out. So yeah, we'll just give you a few minutes here to try whatever ones you want.
Okay, so we're gonna kind of come back together, finish up whatever um, technique you're trying or anything else that you were doing. Um, and again, we just wanna um, hear your thoughts about maybe what um, technique you tried or others you may um, be interested in trying, others that you may know of. Um, you can type in the chat or unmute if you wanted. Yeah, we have a few comments. Um, somebody said, stretching was wonderful. Um, another person says, I like the idea of having a grounding object. It's like having my calmness in my pocket. Yeah, stretching is really great. I think even if you don't think about grounding yourself in the moment while you're stretching, just kind of releasing that tension or anything that's built up is good. Somebody said, I enjoy a good scream every once in a while, and it's not very applicable in the dorm. And then another person said, I've been focusing on my breathing during walks to meetings on campus. I arrive more focused and ready to collaborate. Yeah, focusing on breathing is really good. I mean, especially if you're on the way to do something else, that's a, I mean, you don't have to take extra time to do that. It's just kind of part of your routine. Yeah. And then we also had another person say, I held onto a grounding object during difficult doctor results really helped. Yeah. I mean, having that with you is really great, especially when you know that um, a difficult time is coming up. And we have another comment that said screaming is kept to a minimum in the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a good way to kind of get up that get out that tension and kind of refocus yourself, but maybe not in a more public area. <laughs> maybe in the car before you get into the office, that might help or whenever free time you get, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, and then our last category that we're going to move into me. <laughs> is soothing. Oh, we did see another chat. Like come a in. stretch and identifying objects in the area around me. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So, my goodness. Let me just. Okay. <laughs> so, soothing grounding. This is more. Um, it's kind of a combination of kind of mental and physical, but it's more um, kind of word-based and, uh, you know, uh, like the first one says, saying kind statements, um, especially if you have like negative feelings about yourself or anything that's happening to you, saying kind statements to yourself is really helpful um, to make sure that you realize that whatever is happening in the moment is not, you know, the definition of your life. It's just something that's happening right now. Um, another thing you can do is think about your favorite things. Uh, just thinking about them, you don't have to list them or, you know, talk about them too much, but just thinking about them like fresh cookies or something that just brings like a smile to your face and like a warm feeling inside kind of calms you down from any distress that you're feeling. Uh, another one is thinking about people you care about, um, especially if you have a lot of good memories with them. Um, it can bring up more, you know, uh, happy memories instead of focusing on anything negative that's happening in your life at that time. Um, also, if they're just, you know, funny people, that's great for me, at least. Um, another one is thinking of words to a song, a quote or a poem especially if you have one that maybe you've read once or twice and it just really sticks with you um, for like the poem or quote or a song that you, that helped you through like tough times before or a happy song that you always smile and you turn it up loud when you're listening to in the car. Um, those kinds of things just bring up more pleasant feelings and can kind of decrease any negative ones. Uh, saying coping statements, um, just, I guess having those coping statements is a good start to have, 
um, a couple examples that you might say to yourself is, I can handle this, especially if you have maybe a lot of work to do, a lot of things piling up. I can handle this is a good thing to just let yourself know that you might be struggling, but you know you can get through it. Um, another one is this feeling will pass. Uh, if you're anxious or upset in any way, um, thinking that, that that's how you feel in the moment and that it will pass and there is more um, more to look forward to. Uh, the next thing is thinking of things you are looking forward to in the next week. So um, maybe, I know it's a Wednesday, so it might be like middle of the week, you're not feeling the best, but thinking into next week or the weekend even, um, fun plans that you might have, things to look forward to, maybe a movie's coming out or anything that, I mean, you think of as positive and you're looking forward to happening in the next week, that can really help calm your body down and put you in a more positive mood. Um, so with this short list, again, we're going to give you some time to try them, you know, do any research you want to do, write them down. Um, we'll just give you a few minutes to do that again. All right, we're going to come back one more time here and just kind of share whatever you tried, what worked, um, something that you might try in the future or, you know, any other ones that you can think of. Um, we got a couple of comments. Somebody said words to a song, how to sing it in my head too. Another person said words to songs or going over the plot of books I have read. Another comment says, I like thinking of people slash dogs I care about. Yeah. Another comment said that they enjoyed thinking about their favorite Elvis song. Very nice. 
Yeah, the plots of books, I guess that wasn't on the list, but that definitely helps ground you. I mean, especially if you enjoy the book, that's a good one. I think words of songs is kind of popular, especially if you have a favorite song, you can just like, especially singing it in your head to yourself. Very soothing. <clears throat> Good one. I have a couple more good comments. Um, somebody said, I often find myself when something is bothering me slash taking up space in my brain, singing, let it go. <laughs> it's on. And then another person said, I like to repeat my serenity prayer. That prayer is a good one too. We didn't have that on the list. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for sharing all of the of the grounding techniques you tried. The, we had some new ones in the chat come up. It was really cool to hear you guys' experiences and what you guys tried. So thanks again for sharing all that. Um, so just a few things to consider as you continue to learn about and practice and just implement coping um, grounding skills into your everyday life. Um, the main thing is practice. So grounding is a skill and like all skills that we learn in our life, it takes practice to be able to build, build those up and really be able to um, do them effectively. So practice goes along with grounding. Um, don't feel discouraged if there are certain techniques that don't resonate with you or feel like don't work in the moment. Um, you That could be just practice them a little bit more or maybe you move on to a different one and start practicing that one a little bit more. So it really all depends. So like I said, don't feel discouraged if they don't work right away. Um, also, kind of like what we talked about um, before and as you guys have been doing this, take note of which ones you like the best. Um, so of course, that is gonna be helpful to remember the ones that you liked and didn't like. Um, and grounding can look differently for each person. So some people may resonate with the physical ones more. Maybe they like a combination of of mental and physical grounding techniques and not the soothing ones, or maybe they like a combination of all three. So really making sure you um, take note of the ones that you like so you can remember them and use them in the future. Um, and then also the way to implement these um, grounding techniques, um, if you find yourself in a stressful situation or if you have some um, intense emotions kind of looming over your head a little bit, um, before those emotions, I guess, get out of control, um, start implementing the grounding technique right away. I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we feel overwhelmed and really stressed about something, and we kind of just, it, it keeps building and building and building, and then it's really hard to come out of that. So being able to notice the stress right away and then use one of the grounding techniques that you guys learned today um, in that moment at the start will help you um, manage those emotions better. Um, next is getting creative with it. Um, so a lot of you guys um, were already starting to get really creative with these grounding techniques, which is awesome. Um, this definitely isn't the, these definitely aren't the only grounding techniques that are out there. There are loads more. Um, we just gave you just a little taste of what to expect when looking into grounding. So get creative with it. Um, and with that, you can come up with your own types of grounding techniques. If you want to modify any of the ones you learned about today to fit you better, that's totally okay too. Grounding can look like anything. Um, and then continuing on, when you are keeping that list of the grounding techniques, if you want to keep that list in your phone or on a piece of paper or something that you can hold with you um, wherever you go, that can be a helpful thing to do too. So if you're at work or something, um, or if you're out on like grocery shopping or if you're just out and about doing something and you start to find yourself in, in a bit of a stress situation, um, having that list ready to go um, can help ground you in that moment. So you're not struggling to try to remember, oh, which technique really worked for me and what, what do I want to do in this moment? Having that list can be really comforting for some people. And then also another thing to consider as you continue to explore grounding is create a voice recording of a grounding message. So a lot of the techniques that Vanessa talked about, um, the soothing ones had to do with a lot of 
talking um, and pos positive talking, I should say. So if you wanted to create a voice memo on your phone um, of a grounding message, whether that be you saying like a coping statement or um, if you want to say um, like a prayer or something or a list of um, quotes or a song lyric, or if, of course, listen to the song. But if you want to create something of your own, that could be an option for you. Another idea is to um, have a voice recording of someone you care about or uh, a supportive figure in your life. Hearing them say like a coping statement to you um, in that recording could be really helpful for some people. And then, of course, ask for help if you need it. Um, so these skills are meant to be explored and practiced and everything. So if you want to um, ask others to help you, um, if you're ever, um, if you ever need it, if you're feeling stressed, um, help you work on some things, that's totally good to go to your support systems. If um, any of you out there are currently seeing a counselor, um, asking the counselor for help with grounding, if you bring it up in session saying that, hey, I'm interested in learning more about grounding or practicing in session, the counselor would be happy to work on that with you. So don't be afraid to ask for help. And then lastly is to not give up. Like I said before, grounding techniques, they take practice because they're skills that one needs to build up. Um, so don't um, be discouraged if they don't work right away. Um, with time, they will come. Um, and here we just have some more resources. Um, we have a couple uh, articles here that have a lot more grounding techniques than we showed. Um, one of them here is a YouTube video that kind of helps you walk through some grounding. Um, and there's a lot more on YouTube as well uh, to just, there's different techniques that might need more um, guidance or others that you can do on your own. Um, there's uh, more articles that have, that explain grounding a little bit more, have a lot more techniques, examples, everything. And at the end there, there are some apps that you can use um, that have uh, grounding techniques, like they can show up daily or um, that you can use whenever. Uh, so it's similar to like Anna said, having that list in your phone, having the apps, um, they have a lot of uh, techniques available and you can I think you can like set some to have as like your favorites I guess um I did notice in the chat about the links I think we can send them after. yeah we could close out the presentation and then yeah yeah we'll get those links yeah there. we'll send them in a minute sure. here um yes. but yeah there's a lot of resources online I think even just googling grounding, grounding techniques, there will be a lot of examples and uh, different websites that help guide you through it. Uh, YouTube's a really good one if you're just looking for um, different types and want to see them in action more or have them explained a little bit better than um, articles might have. Um, yeah, we will make sure to get these in the chat. <laughs> Okay. okay, so just a quick summary here, um, talked about what grounding is, um, different ways that it can be useful. There's a lot of examples uh, that we gave you guys, and also, you know, just practicing grounding, as well as resources and everything that we can share with you guys in a minute here. Um, are there any questions? comment well done thank you so much another thank you both so much yeah i really enjoyed the session as well mm -hmm. um we have one question what techniques do you two prefer mm -hmm. a good question I think, yeah, yeah i think a was... big one for me that i've practiced a few times and enjoy is like kind of the clenching of the fist it's more the progressive muscle relaxation, that's a little bit longer, but just like tensing my shoulders and then releasing that tension, my arms and then kind of my legs is a lot of like helps release that physical tension. That works for me. 
Yeah, I I like um I like more probably the soothing grounding techniques. Like I don't know what what's can be helpful for me is just to remain positive in a tough situation. So saying those positive statements back to myself um to try to ground myself in that moment. And also I'm a music person, so I I love to just sing songs and um list off song lyrics and everything. So I I really like doing those grounding techniques. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? Yeah, more comments. Thank you. This was very helpful. Thank you. So yeah, you guys did a fantastic job. And yes, if you have any questions, please send them through the, the chat or feel free to interrupt any time. And um, as we wrap up our session here, um, I do want to say thank you to Anna and Vanessa. Again, it was a wonderful session. We really enjoyed it. And I learned a lot too. I think I, I really need to incorporate this in my daily life as well. Um, before, you know, you know, it's approaching that one hour mark. And so I want to be mindful, but, um, before we do hop off, I did just want to share a couple of reminders for, um, our future think programming and some kind of general things, um, as well. Um, first, um, be on the lookout for future think and unthink sessions. We try to have a couple every month. We have one think session and then one unthink session. And so we'll be sending out information for those sessions here in the coming week. So um, keep your eyes out. Um, you know, they take the same format as, you know, this session. And they are very enjoyable and really nice to have over that lunch hour. Um, additionally, something um, se separate from this programming, but um, for especially if we have faculty and staff um, on to be aware of. Um, our student health service is currently doing a menstrual product drive. Um, and so we are collecting um, products specifically from faculty or staff. Um, you know, there are email reminders for that. Um, and there's more information um, with, with within those emails. I'm happy to answer questions as well. Uh, but once we are finished collecting that product at the end of this week, then we will be giving it back to students through um, the Little Free Pantry and residence halls and making it, you know, continue to make it um, that product easy more easier, um, accessible, easily accessible, um, in addition to continuing to support with like our flow on the goal program. So um, just being mindful of that. And then um, you are most likely getting quite a bit of emails from our health promotion um, team um, email, but we're just pushing out all this great stuff that we'd like to continue sharing with our NDSU community. So I do see that Vanessa and Anna, they did put some links in the chat as well. So before you hop off, if those are of interest, please take a look at those. Um, and stay tuned for future communication about our sessions. Thank you again, Vanessa and Anna. I really appreciated it. And um, I think I can speak on everyone's behalf when I say we all appreciated it. So thank you all. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Have a good rest of your day. Mm -hmm. Well, if it, unless any, you know, again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to add them to the chat. Otherwise, you know, we will be um, ending this session here in, in just a minute, but feel free to send any emails our way. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vanessa and Anna. I know that was a full hour there, but we really appreciated it. So um, yeah, we'll continue to connect with you guys in the future here and go from there. Yeah, that was, that was a really good job. That's all I wanted to say. It's fantastic. It was. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, thank okay. you guys. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. And we'll we'll um plan to touch base here with you, you, um, Vanessa and, and Anna in the future. Thank you. Good. Bye. Bye.